Hello and welcome back to our video series where we talk about everything related to microscopy. My name is Philip. And my name is Chiara and we're the hosts of this video series. As promised in the last episode, we have Reto Bieland, the commercial director of Microscopy, with us who makes a product demo. Yes, Reto is going to be connecting from our showroom in Barcelona, where he's going to be showing us how to use the Motecnet software, a software that allows both teachers and students to facilitate the work in the classroom through digital microscopy. Enjoy the video! Welcome to our uh, digital microscope laboratory. Uh, so, as we discussed in the, the other video, one of the ways to digitize a classroom uh, is to first of all take a microscope that you have and you turn, you add a camera, you turn that into a digital microscope. And then the next step would be to have a fully integrated digital microscope, in this case with a silver line here with uh, a uh, wireless camera already built in. So, as a student, I don't need to do anything, I cannot break anything, I cannot steal anything. I'm just still using the normal microscope as uh, before. So I'm sat here at the teacher's station. So uh, as a teacher, I can teach. So because it has a camera inside, the live image is wirelessly beamed straight to a computer uh, through the router, which is also programmed and provided by Motic. So um, if you have a projector connected to, um, connected to the uh, computer, you can immediately start teaching like this. But what if, for example, here we have six other students? Um, in the previous video, we discussed the, um, one of the reasons why digitization in the, in the science classroom is very important and useful is to give teachers more time and also more assurance that they know what they're actually uh, teaching and they know what the students are looking at and they know, therefore, what the students are learning. So, one of the reasons I mentioned that why uh, teachers are hesitant about using micro microscopes in a classroom is because then they have to set it up and then they actually physically have to get up and make sure that all of the students are looking at what they were supposed to be looking. But with a networked system, so if you have the digital microscopes or uh, digitized microscopes, the next level you link them all together. As a teacher, I don't have to move from my station. Uh, I can immediately see, for example, what are all the students' uh, microscope images uh, broadcasting and looking at. So, for example, here I have six connected and they're all broadcasting without the students' knowledge to the uh, teacher's system and the teacher can know immediately what, uh, what all the students are doing. So, it gives assurance to the teacher about what the students are looking at and therefore it also assures the students that if they do anything wrong then the teacher will come in and say hey you're looking at the uh, at point a you're supposed to be looking at point b so it makes it takes the stress out of using microscopes in the science classroom and uh, it gives everyone a certain level of uh, ass assurance and and comfort um, that is one of the ways okay uh, next step we will look at even one step further and what happens uh, in in schools where you have a BYOD or bring your own device system whereby either the students bring their own device be it iPad, Android device, mobile phones or the schools already provide iPads or Android tablets uh, in, from other uh, curriculum like languages or math or um, digitized textbooks and what happens what, when they bring that into the science classroom. All right, so we talked about uh, in the previous um, video also that um, an image in a microscope is normally ephemeral. That means if you look at the eyepieces and you look at your, your prepared slide, in a conventional microscope, there's no way to take any data from that image. Okay, so this is why we have a digital microscope. So then you can take that image and then you can quantify it later. Now with a networked system, you can have the level one. Okay, you can have the students just using the microscope in a normal way, uh, but at the same time, automatically the microscope will broadcast live images to the teacher station so you can see exactly what uh, each student is looking at. Then you have level two, you add a, a device, you add a tablet or you add a phone or anything like that and you can very simply connect it uh, in a student station, you can connect it directly with uh, the microscope that the student is using. So in this case, we have a little iPad here 
and you can see that this is broadcasting exactly what the student is looking at under the microscope. So now in this level that means we can start to share a microscope. So you can have a group of students, four or five people, okay, sharing the microscope, talking about what they're seeing uh, and then learning from it through interaction. Of course at any time you can capture the image, then you can quantify it, you can measure, you can count, you can annotate and then you learn from the image. Okay, so that was that level. You can take it then even one level further. If you really want to expand and let's say you have 30, 40, 50 students in a classroom system, uh, especially in Asia, for example, where we have you know, up to 110 students in a, in a, in a teaching hospital or in a, uh, in a university course, each looking at a microscope, each having their own device, uh, and the teacher wants to show what's coming out of the teacher's microscope straight onto every student's device. So with a wireless uh, network system, you can of course do that. So if I go back to my uh, teacher's image, so this is coming from my, from my teacher's uh, microscope at the teacher's desk, uh, then I click on uh, teaching, okay? and I can do forced or unforced. So forced means I can interrupt everyone and then uh, broadcast the image straight to everyone's, uh, everyone's tablet. So you can see here now every tablet that would be in the classroom is mirroring the teacher's uh, screen. So this has two advantages. One, the teacher can now, uh, can now broadcast what is on the uh, microscope and then the students can find a similar place under their own microscope using their own prepared slides. One other benefit is that then actually you can take Motiknet out of the science classroom and use it for, uh, for cross uh, curriculum or cross uh, subjects as well. You can then use it with math software, you can use it with others. So actually an investment in Motiknet is not only an investment in the science classroom, but it's an investment for the entire, for the entire classroom. Um, as a teacher, okay, let's just focus on the science here, on, the, on our uh, image. So, from the teacher's point of view, I can then uh, still change what I'm looking at and everything will be on a live uh, point of view uh, on every student's device. If I find that uh, it is uh, clear what they're supposed to be looking at, I can then uh, stop the teaching and release all of their devices back to their own uh, live image. Now, of course, I can also do this in, in another way. I can teach, forced, and then if I find that uh, Mike over here has a very interesting point in his, uh, in his screen, so this is Mike over here, then whatever now I'm broadcasting is broadcasting from Mike's microscope to every other device in the, in the classroom. So now you can share if one of the groups or one of the students has found something very interesting or they have a question, then they can immediately the future, broadcast it to everyone else and then they can have a discussion about it. So really you make this uh, what's formerly a very uh, isolating individual experience of looking at the, at the microscope, you really turn it into a, an interaction. And we all know that through interaction, uh, the students have more fun and it becomes way more um, conducive to learning and remembering. Because you remember that uh, I found this and then my classmate found something else. So it's much, much easier. So we have done um, this type of uh, networking for several years and of course the technology expanded. We started maybe 15 years ago, everything with uh, analog cameras and through a, a, a switch. And now, of course, technology has increased, wires have disappeared, everything is wireless. I would really suggest uh, that you book with uh, Motig Europe, either an online demo or depending on your COVID regulations, an on-site demo, have a look touch and feel and see how it can actually affect uh, your classroom experience, your teaching experience and uh, your classroom management experience. One more thing, one as a teaser before we go, homework and interaction at the end of the class with the Motiknet system I can set a quiz and I can send that quiz, for example I take a picture and, and say label all of this uh, cell structure and I can send that individually 
to uh, all of the students' uh, devices. Because okay. they have mobile phones or they have iPads or Android tablets, it will be sent there. They take that home, do their homework, and then the next class they come in, link up to the Motignet system, and everything will uh, be automatically transferred to the teacher's computer, where it will be categorized. Okay, by default, it's categorized by class, by date, and then by student name. Okay, this can be customized however you want. And then as a teacher, I immediately have all of the, the information. So from online screen, uh, online live image sharing to still image sharing, to homework sharing, to interaction and to text-based interaction, because you can also send messages to, this, to the teacher and the teacher can send messages back if some of the students are a little bit shy about asking a question in class. Uh, the Motignet system really is a platform whereby, as a teacher, okay, you can save time, you can be assured that what it is you're teaching is being recognized by the student and that they're learning the same thing that you want actually to teach them. And of course, for the student, if they get to use something digital, they get to use their own device, they get to use the devices that are in school, and you turn everything online, digital, interactive, they will then, of course, have a lot more fun as well. So it's a win-win situation. If as a teacher or as an end user or as a student, if you have any suggestions, something that is missing, because at Motic, as you may know, we make our own software, we make our own hardware. Of course, at any time, we're ready to listen to you. We're ready to add some new and cool features that only you as a teacher will know. So I hope this brief introduction has uh, given you some thoughts and some inspiration as to how you can uh, upmarket and, and add some pizzazz into your, into your science classroom. And uh, I hope that um, we will be able to teach you and show you and convince you uh, in your school how this system can revolutionize the way you teach. That was genuinely so interesting and so amazing. Uh, I'm just thinking back when I used to go to school, there was maybe 23 of us in a class and we only had three microscopes. So it was very difficult for us to be able to share the microscope and to be able to view the scientific work that we were doing. Um, and I think it's incredible that Motic through MoticNet and our digitalized microscopes um, are able to um, make us share this experience as Rachel was saying um, it used to be a very individual and quite lonely experience uh, but now you're able to share with your other students or with your teacher and confront each other through the chat uh, available in the software and um, I think it's incredibly cool what do you think Philip? I totally agree with you I wish that back in the days where I was in school we had technology like this I think it would have helped a lot of students back in the day but this is the future, so really many kids and students will profit from this. I really wish to hear your thoughts and your questions, um, so leave everything you wish to communicate with us in the comment section or on our social media accounts that you find in the description box. Yes, and don't forget to subscribe so you stay tuned with our other videos. And I guess we'll see you next time. Bye! Click like. Bye.